All right, so let's take a look at our first friend here. This turtle is a Eastern Red Ear Slider. This is probably the most commonly seen turtle here in Kikarillo and many other places across the state. This turtle likes to spend most of his time in the water and basking on logs. And they typically only leave the water if it's a female looking to lay eggs or if their body of water has dried up and they're looking for a new place to live. They get their name from the red stripe that you can see behind their eye. And as they get older, the turtles will get darker in color and sometimes they'll even lose the coloring on their red eye stripe. These turtles are also commonly sold in pet stores as pets. Red ear sliders typically live about 30 to 50 years, so they are a long-term commitment. Our next friend we're gonna take a look at here is another turtle that commonly occurs in the preserve and in many bodies of water, but they're not commonly seen. This is a type of musk turtle this is the Eastern musk turtle. These turtles like to spend most of their water, most of their lives underneath the water, walking along the bottom. And they can be seen basking occasionally, but they're very shy. So they don't like to be seen very often. Now this turtle is a young turtle, though the adult size doesn't get much bigger than this. This is the shell of a musk turtle, a razorback musk turtle. And so the adult size for our Eastern musk turtle is about the same size as this shell. So our friend here still has some growing to do. An interesting thing about this turtle is one of the common names is also called a stink pot. And they get that name because if they're frightened, one of their defense mechanisms is to emit a very foul smelling odor to try to scare away whatever predator has uh, scared him. As you can see, he can pull his head and his limbs into his body close and tight, but he cannot seal his shell up all the way. So our next turtle friend we're gonna talk about is a terrestrial turtle. This is a Eastern three-toed box turtle. If you take a look, they get its name from the three toes on their hind feet. Now this turtle likes to spend most of its time on land, but it will occasionally wander into shallow pools of water and soak and drink. The interesting thing about the box turtle and how it, it gets its name is because this turtle has a hinge on the bottom of its shell. And if it were afraid of me, right, right now he's pretty happy. If he were afraid, he could actually pull his head and his arms into his shell and in completely seal up his entire shell so that he would be protected from whatever was frightening him. He's pretty happy right now, so he's happy to be out and about. Box turtles do like to live on land, like I mentioned, and they like to eat a variety of things. They'll eat mostly bugs when they're juveniles, when they're young, and as they get older, their diet shifts to lots of plants, vegetables, fruits, berries, and also some insects as well. Next, we're going to answer a couple commonly asked questions we get asked here at Kikarillo. The first question is, what would cause a turtle to abandon its shell? And what many people don't realize is that the shell of a turtle is actually its bone and its backbone is fused to the top of its shell. So let's take a look at one of these shells to illustrate. You can see here on the inside of this empty box turtle shell, that there are ridges that run along the inside of the shell. These are actually pieces of its fused backbone. If we take a look here at this replica of a turtle shell, you can see how all of the bones are placed inside and all of the other bones are loose so that the turtle can walk and move around with the exception of the backbone along the back. Additionally, turtle shells have what's called keratin. So just like human fingernails and hair has keratin in them, the scoots on top of a turtle's shell are made of this same material. And as you can see here, the keratin scoots 
have come off of the bone of the shell and that's all that's left of this one. So you can actually see how flexible these scoots are. So unfortunately, if you find an empty shell, it's not because a turtle has abandoned its shell, it's just evidence of a turtle that once lived and is no longer here anymore. The second commonly asked question we get is regarding turtles and salmonella. A lot of people are concerned that turtles and reptiles can carry salmonella and infect a human to make them sick. Now it's true that many animals can carry salmonella bacteria and many turtles can as well, but it's impossible to know if a turtle or reptile has it unless they are tested. Now if you have a pet turtle and you want to get it tested for salmonella, even if it comes up negative, it can still contract the bacteria at some point in its life. So it's important to make sure that you practice good hygiene habits when you handle a pet turtle and to make sure you supervise young children while they're handling their turtle, making sure that they keep their hands out of their mouth. Thanks for joining us at Kikarilla Misher Preserve today as we learned a little bit more about our turtle friends. I hope you enjoy viewing them in the wild. There's plenty of online resources and books that you can look into to learn a little bit more about our turtle friends. As we say goodbye to our turtle friends, a fun fact to keep in mind is that the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtle characters were based off of a mutated version of the Red Ear Slider. So every time you see a slider in the wild, you can think of them. Thanks.